Last month, I read this comment recommending a sci-fi book called Blind Sight by Peter Watts. Now, I haven't heard of this book before, but I get three Audible credits every month, so just like audiobooks, and while I was at the gym, I was like, eh, why not? I'll just pick it up and listen to it. And holy cow, is it unsettling in the most kind of logical way possible, which makes it even more unsettling in a weird way. The book explores how consciousness might be beautiful, but not necessarily useful. And there's just no way that I wasn't gonna make a video about this because it seems so relevant as we open up this AI Pandora's box. This is a fiction book, but it settles into your mind like a philosophical neuroscience, like alien movie. It's so weird. And making it even worse, I didn't really know the word blindsight. I didn't know it from its like technical term before even reading the fiction book. So without understanding that it means like knowing without knowing, a lot of this stuff didn't make sense to me until it just like clicked halfway through the book and I was like, oh, weird. So without revealing the story, here's the big weird conceptual thing that the whole book and the concept is built around. And that's this idea that the smarter you get, the less conscious you get. And the reason I want you to at least explore this thought with me is that that means like what we have as conscious beings isn't so much special as it is because we're limited. Imagine the first time you drove a car, how you were aware of where your feet and your hands were. In a sense, you were more conscious of that moment than when you later learned to drive and you could just drive for hours without thinking about the mechanics anymore. So in that sense, what consciousness is, is us bumping up against the limitations of what we don't know. And in theory, if our brains were just bigger and bigger, or we use Neuralink to like connect them to the entire internet, and we felt like extensions of our body were all of the robots and self-driving cars and the limit of our computation was these big supercomputers, then maybe everything would happen basically unconscious, like the way that you've learned to drive a car and you wouldn't feel conscious at all anymore. Like, what about that? What if we become unconscious because we just become so smart that we can predict everything and it's never bumping up against what we don't know, so we never get a sense of self because self is like what you don't know about the rest of the world. Like, come on, that's sort of freaky stuff because everybody's like, consciousness is so special, but like, what if consciousness is the, because you're dumb, like that's, you don't have a full picture, so you're conscious. We've talked about artificial intelligence plenty of times on this channel and how a system might get super capable and intelligent without being necessarily conscious, and it's still super dangerous to Earth and the alignment problem and humanity and the paperclip factory and all that stuff. So this book, it's like the same concept, but packaged much better because they can put it inside of an alien and have humans who are conscious kind of interact with it and you can see the dichotomy in much more of a story-driven way. So now let's talk about the word blindsight because I didn't really get it before. Without spoiling anything in the book, blindsight is already a neurological term. It's this phenomenon where people who are clinically blind still kind of have a sense of sight. And what I mean by that is because their eyes eyes don't work, they're blind, and they definitely could not see objects in the room. But the fact that they can kind of navigate around them and sometimes grasp them, and it's not necessarily clear, but there's something below consciousness that is actually kicking in. So individuals with blind sight have some level of unconscious vision. If you know the character Daredevil from the Marvel movies, it's like that, but he's actually pretty conscious about his radar. This is something where they can't even describe why they're so aware of something in the room. And a little side note about blindsight, that's why sometimes your gut instinct, especially when it comes to like safety, can be something really worth trusting. In fact, there was a study done where somebody took a picture of an empty alley. Then they had a bad guy, you know, like fake scientist bad guy with a knife hiding behind one of the garbage cans where they weren't in view at all. And then they took another photograph of the same exact alley, same tripod, the whole thing. And if you show it to a bunch of college students and you say, which image is safer? Even though there's like actually nothing that you can consciously say different about the two, they do tend to get a little bit more of an icky feeling of the one where the guy's like hiding behind the garbage can. And maybe it's just like a pixel or two or the way the light's reflecting off the garbage can or something that just somehow deep down inside the visual cortex, there's a little bit of something to be concerned about, but you can't describe it. You know, if you get that icky feeling about a person, like maybe there's just something that you can't put your finger on it, but if you, you feel that way, like trust it, I think. Like these concepts kind of play off each other because you're sort of asking yourself, like when does something move up from the subconscious into conscious awareness? And why is conscious awareness an important part of us saying that we're like sentient or self-aware? And the novel plays with this idea where humans are interacting with aliens, but the weirdest thing about the aliens are that they just don't have any kind of self-consciousness. They're just super intelligence. Although this book does read like fiction, the conversations between each character is like, completely like philosophical and like, well, what about that thing? Is that conscious? What about that thing? Like it just picks apart 
all these little actions they make and like everybody questions everything. It'd be, it'd be like the craziest environment to live in. If you and all your friends were like that all the time, you'd go crazy. But these people kind of are crazy. Some of them have been like genetically modified. Some of them have been, had their brains tweaked. Some of them are like half vampire. Like there's all sorts of weird kind of characters in this book that all have different brain deformations that make the conversations about consciousness so interesting. And at the end, you're just wondering like, is sentience something that was a byproduct of evolution and it's an accident? Was it productive at some point and it was important to be like in the evolutionary tree? I don't know really. It doesn't give you a good answer for that. It leaves you with more questions than answers. And it's also weird because the main narrator, like the person that you are, the main protagonist, has undergone a specific brain surgery that has pulled out his ability to empathize with others. So here you are like conscious, sentient, self-aware, sort of human, but also not really like the emotional empathy part of us. Now the other character, the vampire, can see multiple things at the same time. So he's kind of like a superior intellect. So have you seen one of these optical illusions where it's impossible for a human to see both the vase and the faces at the same time? You know, there's some kind of bottom up process and at certain point there's like a tipping point. So by the time it gets to your full consciousness, you have to see one or the other. Some of the other characters in this book can actually hold both of these images in their mind at the same time, making them vastly superior. Or this thing where it's like either a duck and that's the mouth or it's a rabbit and these are the ears. And then as if this wasn't like enough of a philosophical, like mind bending journey, the concept of free will is like speckled in every chapter. And you're just like, oh God, is that free will? Is that not free will? Was that a choice? Was that determinism? You know, and, and real science says that a lot of your personality is actually in your DNA, which is pretty new science, but it's also important to remember that like the DNA could have been read in different ways. You could have had a different combination from your parents and you'd have actually a different personality and you'd feel different. So like, Genes are also part of the thing that make us feel like who we are. And if you follow that all the way up, you kind of start questioning like, was that free agency to make that decision? Or was that part of like something that was determined and I just had to act that way? And this is all happening in the year 2082, which is kind of like, hmm, a lot of people born today will still be alive at that point. And that's kind of freaky if that's really the kind of progress you think we might have. Like in the book, AI is portrayed at this point is so vastly intelligent that we are all basically living in a zoo. Some of us don't know it or we have free will, but these kind of intelligent machines are just so vastly beyond anything we could imagine that they've already kind of understood everything that we're capable of and they're just letting us do what we want. You know, I sometimes crave this kind of like shake me up a little, like give me a thought, but if that's what you want, this is definitely a book that you're gonna love. Like it's a really interesting premise to have a group of humans sort of stuck on a spaceship, but they've been tweaked in different ways, like through surgery, drugs, or machinery. So everybody's got this essence of human, but when you hear their character talking or the side of the argument that they're on, you have to remember like, oh, that person has like that part of their brain removed or that part's like half machine. And just by thinking about that, you're basically thinking about transhumanism. Like where are humans going to be in another 60 years? Also, when I was looking up some of the reviews on Amazon, like I found the best author page I've ever seen by Peter Watts. Look at what he wrote for his Amazon page. This is awkward and a little creepy. They tell me that I have to do it for promotional purposes, but I've already got a blog. I've already got a website. Being told that setting up an author page on effing Amazon is essential to success, question mark. A company that treats us all like such swear word children, it doesn't even allow us to correctly spell some word I can't spell with a vulnerable history going back 900 years or more. That just sucks the one-eyed purple trouser eel, but still here I am. I, I don't know, this guy just feels like, like I feel like he just hates everything or something. Stick it to the man, free will doesn't exist. Exist, like we're gonna be transhumans and everything you know is a lie. Like, okay, okay, bro, I get your story. Like it's throwing me off too. You're doing a great job. You're shaking me up, okay? Is that what you wanted? Next goal is 7,000 subscribers. Free will doesn't exist. Smash that subscribe button.